push and rise. See this hook? Yeah. Actually goes here inside to lock the seat. To mount it back, just simply put it down and slide in. So it's locked here and two bolt to secure it. So actually this is the element, those are the elements we have to remove in order to get access to the battery compartment that is under this panel. I'm removing the plastic panel to get access to the battery compartment. To remove those two screws for the seat light switch. Yeah, because when they close the seat, this part compress the button. And it's exposed to quite a lot of vibration. We need to remove also those two screws. those two. Let's remove the foot pad, passenger foot pad. And this cover is just connected by three pin. The same on the other side. Then to remove this panel, the easiest way is to grab it from here, from those two wings, and just pull it up. So the AC cord starts from here, it's rooted on the side of the frame, and then here behind the panel goes inside the trunk, it's rolled here, and it terminates with a charging plug. Now, let's open the battery compartment. This is the cover of the battery compartment. We have to remove those six screw and those six bolts. Now, to remove this part, let's remove the trunk light switch and pull up. Now, this vehicle doesn't have a battery installed. And this is the motor controller unit. This unit, it received the information from the ICM regarding the information about the input and the throttle position and drive the motors, getting the energy from the battery. Now, let's show how to run the motor controller. So now actually we can see where the DC cord is rooted. It comes from the charger on the side of the frame, inside the battery compartment, and is connected here. So we can see three red wires, three black wires. This is actually the positive and negative of the battery charger going into the motor controller and through the motor controller to the battery. Battery charger is connected here to reduce the number of wires going to the battery, to minimize the connection. We have just to close those two legs to remove the connector. With a flat screwdriver, it's much easier. Disconnected. 
We have on this connector also white and brown. Those two wires are going back to the motor controller to drive the cooling fan. Here on the bottom of the motor controller we have three wire. This is the three phase of the motor. And they are marked, we'll see better later after dismounting them, they are marked as A, B, C. This sequence A, B, C is also marked on the motor controller. It's very important to be respected. If we swap by mistake two cables, the motor it will rotate backward instead of forward. We can remove the data harness. the encoder connector and the three motor cable by losing the 8 mm nut Here as well, a magnetic socket. It will help to prevent the nut to fall inside. Pull off the A face, B face. And C phase, as I said before, each phase its mark. Red A, yellow B, green C. That's its mark here. Let's remove the motor controller cover to get access to the electronics. There are three screws holding the cover. and some spacer to pay attention not to not fold them inside. Here we have the motor controller unit. This is a main battery fuse. There is one fuse located inside the motor controller and a second fuse, exactly identical, located normally in the half of the series of the battery pack. The battery positive pass through an amp meter to measure the battery current and the negative is directly connected here. We can see that there are three fuses here and four fuses here. Each of these fuses is in series with the <coughs> supercapacitor, which is supercapacitor. In case of one of those fuses blow, we'll have an indication light showing cap core error message. It means just that these fuses need to be replaced. Now, to remove the motor controller plate, we have first to remove plus and minus and then unscrew it from the heatsink. Here as well, we are going to remove the 8 mm nut holding the cables.
can put those three nuts back in position before removing the controller to avoid that this brass spacer get loose during the removal of the board. We have four small screw to be removed. As you can see there are a lot of electronic components here, so do carefully those operations to avoid damage to the motor controller. Now we can remove the board from the heatsink. Take it from down and from up. The easiest way is to rotate it a little bit and pull it out. It's, it's actually it's not glued, but there is a thermoconductive paste on all, on all the rear surface to increase the heat exchange between the element, electronic elements and the heatsink. So just rotate it a little bit and it will go out by herself. So, actually on the boards we have the following elements. I'm not going to explain what the electronic components in details do, but we have here the main DC-DC converter. This unit, it converts the 120, 30 volt DC volt from the battery to the 12 volt going out from the data connector, data and 12 volt to power up the rest of the bike. If this unit failed, the bike will result completely dead. No light, no display, no response to the key. Actually, there is no 12 volt. There is a seven and a half amp fuse here in series with the input to protect the DC-DC converter. So actually, if this fuse get blown, the bike it will result dead. It may be possible just to replace it with the new unit. Those two 25 amp fuses are the fuses I was mentioning before for the charger output, because the charger is connected to the battery through the motor controller, here through the plus and minus, those two fuses are just protecting the traces on the motor controller. If those fuses get blown, the uh, bike cannot ch be charged because the charger will not detect the battery. But you can replace them now. The old boards, they didn't have those holders and the fuses were actually soldered to the board. So a failure of a fuse, it may need replacement of the entire boards. We are modifying the boards in order to get those fuses replaced. And the new 3.3 kilowatt charger is not anymore connected to the motor controller, through the motor controller, but is connected directly to the battery. Because his charging power is much stronger, this board cannot hold such a power, so we decided to connect it directly to the batteries. It has a fuse, resettable fuse inside, and there is a fuse on the cable. So in a case of a shortage, it opened the circuit and after a minute it attempts to reclose the circuit again. So it's self-resetting. We don't have access to this part and we don't need actually. There is also a main battery fuse as I was showing before. It's a 200 amp. We can check the functionality of the fuse using a standard multimeter. If this blows Obviously, we don't have any more the 130 volt going to the motor controller, so we don't have also the 12 volt, so the bikes will result completely dead. So this fuse is two times higher rated than, than needed. Okay, the actual current used here, it's almost three amp. This is rated seven and a half. It doesn't fail practically never. It failed only if there is an uh, electronic failure on the DC-DC converter himself, because the 12 volt output it's also protected by fuses on the ICM side so actually this it will blow only if these parts will fail if these parts will fail the entire motor controller would need to be replaced or either sent back to the factory for a, a repair for electronic repair 
through the cover you have access to those fuse. There are holes in the cover. So you have to remove just the air plenum cover, the battery compartment cover. Yeah. And you can either measure them mm -hmm. and replace them. Here as well, as I was mentioning before, there were four fuses originally soldered to the boards, right now removable for those capacitors, to protect those capacitors. Those are the three motor phase, as I was mentioning before, A, B, C marked on the board, on the cover and on the cables. And they are connected directly to this element. This is the IGBT, actually it's the switching component that drive the motors. What else we can see on the motor controller is this jumper. This is actually a low level programming port. Normally, it's possible to upgrade the firmware of the motor controller through the CAN bus, through the diagnostic, as we will show later. But if for any reason during the programming of the motor controller, you lose the communication with the boards, for example, the diagnostic cable uh, get unplugged or the battery of the laptop get discharged, you will stop the programming in the half of his stage. You will lose the bootloader stored in the chip. So it will be required to restore the bootloader through this programming port using a specific programmer. Those sense? red fuses also, they were getting blown before for the same reason as the other one they were blowing. Actually, the filament, it was crimped on two legs and with the vibration, it may prematurely blow. Those new fuses, they have a much better connector. There's a spring loaded pins here. Since we introduced this type of connection, there are no more cap core failure on, on the sold products. There's a real feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not failing it anymore. They were failing purely for mechanical reason, not for electrical reason. If one of these capaci capacitors for any reason get internally shorted, this fuse will blow. Right. You will put a new one, the moment you will insert the new one, it will blow again. So if one of those four fuses go, you will get the message cap core showing that the capacitor current has a problem and you will need to go to the service point and re just to replace the fuse. The bike doesn't die, but it will show you an error message. If you will continue to drive with this error message for a couple of months, it may happen that also the seven and a half amp fuse will blow due of a failure of a DC-DC converter because actually those capacitors help when you drive okay you have a lot of current peaks so those capacitors helps to stabilize the voltage on the motor control board and on the DC-DC converter input missing of one it may result in a quick failure of a second one and then the third one then the fourth one then you don't have any more capacitor the bike it will continue to drive with the error message then the DC-DC converter may fail due of missing of those capacitors. Okay. It may take months before all of them goes. If you don't visit the service point within this period, most probably the entire board will fail. Now, the very important procedure while replacing, replacing the motor controller is applying properly the thermoconductive paste and screwing the motor controller properly back in place on the heat sink. If, if the thermoconductive paste is poorly applied or not applied, it may result in the overheating of the motor controller that it will result into the uh, error message on the display, hot controller mm. and performance limitation, power limitation. The bike it will continue to drive up to the point it will slowly, slowly, slowly stop the fan, it will try to cool down the boards till it drives back again. Here we have a temperature sensor for the motor controller and it's screwed here to the hottest part of the board to the heat sink. It measures the temperature of the controller. If, if it exceeds certain value, it starts to apply a power limitation. So let's apply the board back in position. You have just to apply it, align 
the holes and screwing it properly. I always moved a little bit the board to be sure that the paste is properly distributed. And then one by one, we're going to put back the screws. Starting from the four of the motor controller, we will not tie them completely, we'll just pre-screw. Put the temperature sensor in position and we'll secure it with the screws. Now the four M3 bolt for the DC DC converter. Now we start to tighten them slowly and gently at the begin, just to be sure that the cream is properly distributed. And slowly we start to increase the torque of those four most they are the most important. Each time we increase the torque, we're going to do the same with those four, just with much lower torque. and then just tie the remaining. So if it's properly squeezed, we will see here on the edge of the DC-DC converter, part of the cream sticking out after tightening. Let's connect back positive and negative. and the isolation cap back in position. back the data cable and 12 volt encoder signal battery charger and fan connector and then the three motor phase reminding that the sequence is important so actually there is quite a lot of current flowing on the motor phases so to be sure that they are tied properly they get loose, actually this part can burn. Damaging the motor controller and the motor cable. For the proper torque, refer to the torque table in the service manual. 
B and the third one C.